something very, very interesting has happened here in South Africa. And that is that uh, Julius Malema has actually admitted in a speech that the Bantu people are not native to South Africa. Now, this is the same Julius Malema who say stuff like kill the boer and we are not calling for the slaughter of old white people yet and uh, also that white people stole the land from the blacks and all stuff like that and now he was here quoted and i'm going to show you the video right now where he admits that black people are not native to south africa so let's take a look at the video we call people zimbabweans we call people malawians we call people who come from outside Makwere Kwere, whereas we are Makwere Kwere ourselves, because we come from where those people come from. None of us come from here. We came from the north and found the Koi and the Sen here in Southern Africa, and we settled here. The Koi and the Sen welcomed us here. Alright, just two things that I have to point out here is Firstly, the Khoisan did not ever welcome the Banjo people here I'm actually having a conversation this Saturday on a live stream with a colored man who is a descendant of the Khoisan So that should be very interesting uh, What actually happened was that the Banjo, when they came here in South Africa Have genocided the Khoisan in what was called as the uh, Defikane which was where they basically wiped out the entire population of the Khoisan. And then the other thing that I have to point out is the reason why Malema did this is because black people here in South Africa are killing foreign black people at an alarming rate. And he wants to unite these black people, the foreigners or immigrants and the ones that immigrated during apartheid. Um, with each other against this common enemy known as the white man here in South Africa. The narrative being spewed by these politicians like Malema and his like are actually something quite different. When I said, when Jan van Riebeck landed in the Western Cape, our problems began. is a, a, a historic fact. <laughs> So this is uh, former President Jacob Zuma speaking, and as some of you may know, he is a Zulu. And the only real historic fact here is that the Zulu Empire was established in South Africa in the 1800s. And that is roughly seven generations after Jan van Riebeek came to the Cape. Before that we know the Zulus came from the Great Lakes area which is today known as Malawi. In fact the Dutch were actually building castles here in South Africa long before the Zulus even came near this country. Quite a funny story on that topic. I've been reading a book by an historian called Nathaniel Isaacs and he actually wrote on Shaka Zulu, the first king of the Zulu Empire. and. What happened was he went to Shaka Zulu's uh, hut and uh, he had this small hut in the middle of the village but it was a lot bigger than the other people's huts. It was built out of mud and, and uh, grass. And when Mr. Isaac sat there with his translator, Shaka asked him, so you, you're from England? And uh, Mr. Isaac replied to him, yes. And Shaka asked him, so, is the king of England's house as big as mine? And then uh, Mr. Isaacs wanted to reply, but then his translator told him, no, no, tell him yes, it is bigger than the king of England's house, otherwise we're going to be killed. So, <laughs> Mr. Isaacs was forced to uh, tell Shaka Zulu that the king of England's house was smaller than Shaka's Madat. My name is Willem Petzer and I'm making videos like these on a weekly basis on every Tuesday and Friday. So if you haven't yet, remember to subscribe. So this video will be about the true history of the peoples of South Africa and when each of those people came here. So I would ask you to like and comment and share this video with everyone so that the people may know the true history of South Africa and what actually happened here.
Now, of course, I can talk for hours on this topic and what exactly happened, but I really want to keep this video short and manageable so that you guys can share it with your friends. So I'm just going to summarize the history quickly. So the first number that is important to know is uh, 1488, because that was when the first white Europeans came to South Africa. As far as we know, that was before we knew that uh, there were some shipwrecks from Mediterranean countries found in Cape Town. But in any case, that's a topic for another day, but you can go look it up. It's very, very, very interesting. One thing that I have to point out is that no black South African was ever enslaved or any of their ancestors. As you can see on this map, the transatlantic slave route never came here to South Africa. And the reason for that is very simple. In the first place, when the Dutch colony was set up in Cape Town, there were no black Africans near the South African colony. And also the Dutch governor of Cape Town made slavery illegal about 150 years before Abraham Lincoln in the United States did. The reason for this was because under Dutch religious law, if a slave became a Christian, he was not allowed to be a slave anymore. So people tried to keep Christianity away from their slaves, which was mostly Malayans in South Africa for the lack of black people. And um, because they didn't want them to become Christian so that they had to be freed and then later the governor just decided okay let's just make all slaves free in South Africa. Another very important thing to know is that the British and the Nguni peoples who were mostly the Zulus, the Corsas and the Ndebeles came to South Africa roughly at the same time. What happened with the Nguni people is they basically massacred or genocided the Khoisan people here in South Africa and killed all of them. A very conservative estimate would be that they killed about 2 million Khoi and San people and drove them all, almost into an extinction. Then, at the Great Track time, they sold the land that they took from the Khoi and San to the Boers. Many of these contracts are known and are still available in hard copy today. The Ndebele people, who were by far the most violent of the Nguni people, under their king Mzilikatsi, was driven back over the Lipopo River during the Great Track by the Voortrekkers. But, as we know, during the time of apartheid was a time when the most immigration from all African countries came here to South Africa. And that led to the Nguni peoples coming back here to South Africa, as well as some other tribes like the Vendas and the Tsongas and the Shangans who only came here to South Africa in the 20th century. It's very funny that the current president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, is a Venda, one of the people that came here almost 300 years after the Dutch, is now saying that we must give back the country to our people. And by our people, of course, he means blacks. But his people, the Vendas, were not in South Africa until very, very recently, long after the Dutch. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And also, if you enjoy my work, consider becoming a Patreon. All the links are in the description. Also, I would like for you to follow me on my social media platforms. Uh, the links are in this, the description as well. Thank you very much, guys. Goodbye.